Welcome back to part two of the video. In part one of the video, you saw us paint the background black. You saw us put the aquarium uh, canister filter together. You saw us put our light on. You saw us uh, put our glass lids on. And now it's time for the fun part. We get to put our dirt substrate in here, get our plants that you see in here, get those planted, uh, get our, uh, our black aquarium gravel substrate on top of that, get this aquarium filled up and get it cycling. For our dirt mixture, all we're using is a little bit of uh, potting soil mixed with a little bit of topsoil. So a little topsoil, a little potting soil. Uh, I went through, I tried to pick out all the big crap out of the, uh, out of the topsoil that I could. Uh, we sifted through that. I got most of the big yucky crap out of it. So I'm going to take our lid off so we have good access. I'm just going to stick it over here on this tank. Yeah, let me get my plants out of here. So this is the easy part. I'm going to put the dirt right here in the center. And then I'm going to use that black aquarium gravel to go around the outside and then to lay it over top as a cap. That's pretty easy. We just dump her in. All right, let's uh, level it out. I just want to build it up in the back here a little bit if I can. Now all I'm doing is I'm just going to go in here and move some of this dirt away from the front of the glass. Like this. Alright, I'm going to plant this. This is a Helfari. It's supposed to grow tall, so let's get this planted. Plant it back here. And all I'm doing is shoving these roots down to the bottom here. And this is the dwarf hair grass, so I'm going to try to plant this in the front because they say it's short. These are all the all the roots right here. Let's see if we can free some of the roots up. I hope these are hardy plants. I don't know. They're about to find out. I'm going to put this right, right in here, I think. That's going to be it for the plants for now because that's all I got. So let's get our gravel in here. Oh yeah, this is really, really super fine gravel. Move that around. We got our substrate in here, and man, I love the color of this stuff. I thought it was more black, but it's uh, almost like a charcoal gray, so. That looks pretty cool. I should put a little more through here. Let me do that. All right, let's start to fill this thing up here. I put this glass dish in here just to kind of slow down the water from moving all the substrate. Let's see if it works. And all the stuff in here, I'm not worried about. I've got a way to get all that out, so I'm not worried about it. This is just some of that light potting soil that I did not cover up underneath this wood that's coming out. This is the part where we just uh, let it fill up. All right, let me get this wood out of here. That's my fault. I didn't even think about it. I didn't, I didn't realize it was going to float up. Now, I turn the water off because I gotta get in here and add some substrate while the water's still not completely full. All right, here's my trick for this. I'm gonna take this cup, 
I'm going to set her in here like so, fill her up with water, and then just dump the substrate right on there like that. All right, we're all filled up. We got a bunch of crap on the top here, but don't worry, we're going to skim all that out. I'll show you how. Get my wife's dish out of here. And for this, just to kind of help polish it up and clear it up, I'm going to use this power head again. And I'm just going to put the sponge around it and watch it suck everything out of there. Here's how we're going to do this. We're going to take this. We're going to fold it over on itself. All right, that'll do it. You will be surprised at how much this filter attracts and takes out of here. That's another way I'm going to get that to clear up. All right. This is just a trick I'm going to use to help get that thing to clear up a little sooner. I have a whole package of these um, filter pads. So I'm going to use them to polish the water, basically. Or, you know, clean all that crap out of the water. So I'm just going to shove them in here. It doesn't matter that they're not, not the right size for this. It doesn't matter because I'm using it just to catch all the garbage. When I open this up, it should flood in. There we go. You can hear the water coming into the, into the canister filter. You can see all the water being burped out of that canister filter. All that air has come out. This canister filter is full. Now it's safe to plug it in. Look, I know this is a dirty, ugly looking tank right now. But please trust me, this dirt will settle. And what doesn't settle will get picked up by the filter. will get picked up by this power head with this filter pan on it. And this will clean up. And I promise you, this will be a beautiful looking tank as well. Not everything went to plan, but we will recover. Well, it's been a, a day or two. And we're still pretty foggy in here. And we're just going to let this stuff settle. It will settle and it will clear up. It just takes some time. All right, so that was just too murky for me to deal with. And I think it's because I didn't rinse my substrate before I put it in there. And I, I just, you know what, I said forget it. And I just thought, you know what, this is 40 gallons. I'll just do a water change. So let's take the water all the way down and put fresh water in here and see if that helps with our, uh, our yuckiness that we were experiencing. While we're waiting for that aquarium to settle and kind of clean up a little bit with the filter, uh, taking some of that particulate out, I'm going to make a quick little um, a DIY uh, skimmer for the top of it to take some of that loose stuff that's on the top and get that out. I'll show you how we do that. I use a regular bottle, just a little water bottle. That's it. I'm going to cut off most of the bottom of it here like that. And now I'm just going to cut some, some uh, uh, I don't know, like into it or something here. All right, so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take those little um, those little cuts that I did. I'm going to fold every other one down. There's that one and that one. And then every other one of these I'm just going to cut off like this. Pink. And that's what that looks like. Like the top of a castle almost. And then I take some filter pad. And I just kind of stuff it down inside here. I have a ton of these filter pads. I ordered... Ordered, uh, I ordered them in bulk, so I've got enough to spare for sure. So it goes down in here like that. You just kind of fill that uh, water bottle up like this. And then you use your power head. You put your power head in through here, attach it, and then this will sit on top of the water like so. Put your water level here, and it'll act like a skimmer. It'll just suck the water in. Your power head will suck the water down, shoot it out. And by doing so, it'll bring the water in and down, and this stuff will catch all the crap. Let me show you. All right, grab your power head, get your bottle that you made here, your little skimmer. You put it right on top of where the intake is for the uh, power head. Now this power head's intake is a little bit smaller than the hole of the water bottle, so a simple fix for that is, I'm gonna use this rubber band. That'll just hold it in place, right? Like so. And then you want your water level to come right to here. So for me, this is going to want to float 
Let's fill it up with water, clamp it in place so it doesn't move. I get it right at the right level here, just like that. Perfect. Now we're going to plug it in and watch it work. And when I turn this on, it should suck the water down and spit it out through here. All right, I just plugged it in. You can see it's starting to suck the water in. And then that'll take all of whatever's up here off the top of the water and collect it into this mesh. And I don't know if you can see it on the video, but in this water, there's all kinds of uh, fine stuff floating around the top on here. So the skimmer should help get it off. Oh yeah, that's doing a great job of collecting stuff off the top of the water. I'm going to give a shout out to Joey, King of DIY, for uh, showing me that trick years ago. It's been several days, and this aquarium is still super, super cloudy. And I know what my mistake was. It was getting that gravel and putting it in here without rinsing it off. It's an amateur mistake. I just thought I could get away with it because it's only a 40-gallon aquarium. I thought, you know what? I can get away without rinsing the gravel. As you can see, I was wrong. I rinse my sand, my gravel, my substrate, and all of these other aquariums. I've always rinsed them out, but this time, for whatever reason, I thought, I don't know, maybe I can just get away with pouring it in here. And here's the thing, this aquarium substrate that I put in here, this black stuff, it's super, super fine. It's like sand. But don't worry, I got a fix for it. I went to Amazon and I got this water polishing aquarium filter pad that goes down to 50 microns, right? So we should, be able, we should be able to pull out all of this fogginess and all of this haze in probably a day or so. So I'm going to put this filter pad in the aquarium filter and uh, put it to the test and see if it works. Before we do that, let's get these fish that we just picked up at the uh, local fish store. Let's get these guys, we've got them acclimated, let's get them into their, uh, into their quarantine tank. We got this garami, we picked up this blue acara, and then we picked up this long finned albino oscar, and then we got these guys, which I can't remember what they're called. And then we got this guy too, he's super cool. In goes the garami, in goes our blue acara, in goes our albino oscar. I don't remember what these guys are, but they're $14.99 each. And here goes our Severum and our Bazani. All right, well, we're gonna see how these things do. Look at how beautiful this guy is. This electric blue Akara is absolutely stunning. All right, first thing we need to do is unplug the canister filter. Now that the canister filter is unplugged, I can bring it forward where I can reach it. I want to pull up this lever to turn it off, to turn the flow off. So the lever is up, flow is off, so it's turned off. Nothing can come down this tube or go up this tube. So I'm going to pull that off. I'll let that sit here for a minute. And then you have to unlock it. And then these two side ones lift it. We'll lift the power head right off. Set that off to the side. I'm gonna run this over to the sink and empty this water out so it doesn't get all over the place. All right, now I'm gonna cut this filter pad to fit. And it's a big sheet basically is what it is. All right, let's put this all back together. Okay, we got the filter pad in there. Let's, uh, let's come back and check on this in a few hours and see how it's doing. Actually, I'm going to bed. Let's check on it tomorrow. All 
this has never happened to me before. In all my years of being in the aquarium hobby, I've never had an aquarium stay uh, foggy like this for as long as it has. And I know what I did wrong. But listen, I've done multiple water changes on this aquarium. We are now several weeks past the first part of this video that you guys just watched. So um, I gotta try something different here. So I purchased this product called Acural F. You put it in the aquarium and it's supposed to help with that fogginess. I've used it years ago uh, and it works out pretty good. So we're going to try that in this aquarium and see if that works. Now remember, we've done multiple water changes. I've done um, some uh, filtration changes, right? I've used the, you know, the 50 micron um, polyfill uh, in the filter and then in this uh, other contraption head. I mean, it looks better for sure, right? but it's not, uh, it's not where it needs to be. My plants are thriving. They're doing great. This one's growing like crazy in the back. So the plants are doing great. I just, this, this fogginess. So I'm gonna use this. I don't know exactly how this stuff works. All I know is that when I used it years ago, I was pretty impressed with it. So I thought, you know what? Let me, I've tried everything else in this aquarium. Let me just, uh, let me try something else. Let me try this. So I went and picked some up at our local fish store and we're giving it a whirl. According to the directions for this, I can use um, one teaspoon per 50 gallons. This is a 40 gallon tank. I'm not worried about overdosing it, so I'm going to use a teaspoon in there. Or if you have a smaller aquarium, you can use two to four drops per gallon. That would be like 200 drops, right? So I'm not counting that out. We'll use a teaspoon. Listen, I know why this happened in my aquarium. I didn't take the time to rinse the gravel or prep the dirt the, the, the best way. You are, you, technically you should be rinsing that stuff out. I thought I could get away with it. Clearly I can't. So I didn't intend for this to be a product review video, but I figure since we're here and since we're doing it, let's review it. Acural F, the original and clearly the best. Uh, keeps aquarium water crystal clear. It clears cloudy and polluted water within hours. Greatly improves filter efficiency. Gives aquarium water that just polished look, combats the harmful effects of overfeeding. It's safe for all cichlids, freshwater fish, and plants. It's made with organic extracts from renewable natural resources. And it says on here, after 40 years, sold around the world, often imitated, but still the professional's clear choice. Use regularly. Let's give it a whirl. Let's see if this stuff uh, will work. I think a teaspoon is about five mLs. So I'm gonna use this cap from something else I have. Let's measure five mLs, which is right there. All right, in the aquarium it goes. And the directions tell you to leave the filtration on so it can circulate throughout the tank. All right, we're gonna put this away. Okay, that's what it looks like right now. We're gonna come back and check on this in a few hours and see how it does. We're gonna let that tank over there do what it's gonna do. In the meantime, I owe these Zambuna to our local fish store. So I'm going to package these all up and get them up there and uh, we'll check back in just a few minutes. So that worked out pretty well. 18 beautiful, healthy Mbunas we took up and uh, yeah, we ended up with $160 for those. Uh, fish, which uh, makes me very, very happy. So that's a, that's a win. All right, let's get back and get things cleaned up in the fish room. So it's been several days since I put that Acryl F in here. And let me tell you, look at this. It cleared up so nicely. I mean, it looks great. And then look at my plants. Look how well my plants are doing. Like this guy in the back is just taking off. They're doing great. So I'm really happy with that. Next step. Let's get a heater in here because this water is really cold. Now that we've got our heater installed, we're going to let this heat up to about, I don't know, 76, 78 degrees. And then we're going to transplant some fish in here from some of our other aquariums. Wow. We just took you on a 20 minute ride of this and that in the aquarium hobby. So we're going to wrap this thing up right here, right now. If you made it this far in the video, give yourselves a thumbs up. You certainly earned it. And as always, we appreciate you being here and watching our videos. We're going to go spend some time with the family and we'll follow up on this aquarium in a later video. And we hope to see you back. As always, thanks for joining us here at the Jeebus Garage channel. And we'll see you in the next video. Please.
pleasure.